coming up. Um, a few years ago, we had this councilman who was considered probably the most, at that time, I'm going to be honest, one of the most homophobic people in the city of Philadelphia. He has become one of the strongest advocates of the LGBT community and of this project. And he's also my good friend, the former council president and former mayor of the city of Philadelphia, John Street. Carried away with those hoods. <laughs> I've known Mark Siegel for a long time too, but unlike some of you, we, it hasn't always been friendly. Uh, Mark is right. I actually did vote against the domestic partnership bill, and he made me pay. In fact, when I decided to run for mayor, Mark had a whole lot of political events and. And of course, he invited all the candidates, and so I came to this event. And it was at his house, and there was this big balcony he has there. Anybody been to Mark Siegel's house? There's this balcony there, and you know, people were all around. I mean, people hanging off the balcony, right? So I walk in, and it was serious quiet in this place. And so I stand over in a corner. And so he finally let me talk. He put me on a chair that was about six inches tall, uh, high. It's about that low. And he said, you cannot stand up and you cannot wave your hand. You have to just sit there and answer questions. He let me have about two minutes to make remarks. Um, it was grueling. And at the end, he said, why did you come? <laughs> And I said I came because I respect the people in this community, even though, even though I disagreed with them in that bill in one issue. I tried to use that batting average thing. Well, I was with you nine out of 10 times. That gives me a nine out of 10, 90%. They said, no, <laughs> that does not work with us. Um, but you know, it was a great experience for me because what I did was I did learn, I was fortunate enough to win the election and I did learn that I really needed to reach out because I had been misunderstood in a way that was very distressing to me. Because I remember I was on the floor of city council when the fair practices bill came and I remember a certain council person stood up at the very last minute and tried to get us to hold that vote. And I remember I was one of the ones who gave a very strong speech that we have waited long enough that a bill was prepared, introduced, it was referred to a committee, a public hearing was held. We did not suspend any rules, and we sat, it sat around, and then all of a sudden, at the last minute, people want to start holding the bill. So the time to vote is now. And somebody might remember Councilman Rafferty's speech. <laughs> Anybody remember Councilman Rafferty's speech? You all not gonna ram anything down our throats here today? Oh, that was funny. <laughs> As serious as it was, when he said that, that council chamber lit up. Back in those days, we didn't have metal detectors, nor did we have the fire department telling us how many people could get in the place. So it had to be 2,000 people there, Mark and, and all the rest. But that really was a seminal moment. But in any event, <laughs> that was a, a very interesting moment. Um, <laughs> But I actually, but, but I, actually I, I, I came to, to understand this community because I didn't understand the community. And we developed probably as strong a working relationship as any group of people that I work with in the entire city of Philadelphia. It's time for a round of applause. Um, and, and we got some things done. But, you, but eight years, I used, to be, I used to be against term limits. Actually, they were looking pretty good by about the seventh year. <laughs> Mayor, you're gonna like term limits too, believe me. <laughs> and I told the mayor when he was sitting there, when you're out of office five years, call me. I got some stuff to tell you. <laughs> we will be able to have a lot of less. When I came here and we saw everything that was going on, uh, I realized why well, I almost never come to these things anymore. Um, but I know there are a lot of speakers, and so I'll be brief, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> How many times have I said that? Right? Um, but in all, in, all, in all sincerity, 
the the election Tuesday's election results and all the ballot questions and all the things that happened uh, in this country coupled with this announcement really really does signal a change a, the kind of change that some people thought would take decades, but it actually took just a few years. As most of you know, I, I, I do some teaching up at Temple I, on, on a very part-time basis. And a student in my class said, four years ago, no one would have believed that the President of the United States would make the statements that President Obama made about gay marriage. No one believed it could happen. People were running against gay marriage all over the United States of America. And I, and I have to tell you, it was, it was so refreshing to see the people of this country reject those arguments uh, and decide that all of us are God's children and we're all created with, with human rights, basic rights, and we're all entitled uh, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And this building, this project, is going to make just a few people happy. It's going to make two, a few people happy, and some folks who otherwise would be living under some very difficult and onerous conditions, you know, would, you know, will be able to en enjoy life. Now, I can tell you as a person who, uh, and Secretary Richmond will join me in this, we just, we just experienced our 69th birthday, and when you, when you get pretty, you start looking, staring 70 in the face, you don't want to have to worry about this kind of stuff. I mean, you really don't want to have to worry about it. And so for some people, it's going to be a relief, but even more so, it sets a shining example of where we ought to go in this city and in this commonwealth and in this country.